There are different types of chemical equations that we can use to represent aqueous reactions. What's called a molecular equation, that's like the regular kind of chemical equation. It's going to show the neutral formulas for the compounds as if they existed as molecules. So potassium hydroxide here is aqueous. It's dissolved in water. But we're just going to write it as its neutral formula. And this guy, it's aqueous. We're still going to just write it as its neutral formula. Even though in the actual reaction, potassium and hydroxide separated from each other. They're circulating around the party, right? Magnesium and nitrate went their separate ways once they got in the door. He wanted salty snacks, she wanted a beer, right? And so they went off in different directions. The complete ionic equation is going to show all the species as they actually are present in the solution. So if it's aqueous, you're going to show individual ions. If it's solid, though, those ions are stuck together, right? And so we're just going to leave that alone. So the complete ionic equation, what we're going to be seeing here is we're going to be seeing something different with aqueous things. And then there is the net ionic equation. So the complete ionic equation, this shows all of the ions. The net ionic equation only shows the things that are actually changing. So it's not going to show the ions that came in and didn't get involved. It's going to leave them out. We're just going to look at the ions that got into a solid relationship. So we're going to always write aqueous strong electrolytes as ions. And so those are going to be, so we're going to write as ions the soluble salts, strong acids, and strong bases. Um, insoluble substances, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes are going to be written as molecules. So that's going to be anything that's a solid, a liquid, or a gas, or a weak acid. And I'm just going to erase the strong bases because that's not really necessary to say that here. So one thing they haven't talked about yet is how do you know if it's a strong acid or a weak acid? It turns out that most acids are weak. There's only six that are strong. So we have a list of strong acids. Hydrochloric acid, hydroiodic acid, hydrobromic acid, nitric acid, whoops, perchloric acid, and sulfuric acid. those six guys. HCl, HI, HBr, strong acids. Nitric acid, perchloric acid, sulfuric acid. If it's not one of those, it's a weak acid. So the odds are in your favor. You know, if you're not sure, I would guess weak acid. But here's the example, the lead nitrate, aqueous, potassium chloride, aqueous, making lead 2 chloride solid, and potassium nitrate, aqueous. So anything with an AQ is probably going to get separated into ions, only if it's a weak acid, but we don't have any acids here. So PBNO3, 2, that's one lead ion and two nitrate ions because that's what this 2 tells me. Here, we have 2 KCl. Well, those separate into K plus and Cl minus, and we're going to have 2 of each of them. 
Over here, this one's a solid. We leave it alone. There's no getting those two apart. And over here, we have potassium and nitrate, potassium ion, nitrate ion, two of these formulas, so two of each of the ions. Okay. The net ionic equation looks at that complete ionic equation and looks for spectators. Spectators are just watching the action happening, right? They're, they don't get involved, right? Spectators at a boxing match don't usually come home with a black eye and a bloody nose, unless things get really out of control. But you were just watching those guys beat each other up. So spectator ions in these equations are ones that don't get involved. They're just watching. So lead and chloride got involved, right? This lead and these chlorides got together. What happened to nitrate? There's two nitrates here, and there's still two nitrates at the end. So if we want the net ionic equation, we're going to cross those off. Yes, nitrate was there. Did it participate in the romantic involvement of lead and chloride? No. They were watching it happen. Maybe they'll get invited to the wedding. Who knows? What about chloride? No, well, chloride got involved, right? Okay, what about potassium? Potassium is the same. We look at the reactants and products. If the product is unchanged from what it was as a reactant, it's a spectator. So we cross off the spectators and we write down what's left. So we get lead two ion plus two chloride ions gives us lead chloride solid. This is the net ionic equation. Like your net paycheck after they take out all that other stuff. It's way smaller at home. Any questions? Let's do an example. Consider the following reaction occurring in aqueous solution. Write the complete ionic and net ionic equations for this reaction. So we're going to look and see aqueous. Aqueous, that one's a liquid, and this one's aqueous. So this water is not going to get split into ions, but probably going to split up everything else. What kind of a compound is this? HI. That's an acid, right? It happens to be a strong acid. Chloride, bromide, and iodide make strong acids. Their little sister fluoride makes a weak acid. So because this is a strong acid, I'm going to separate it into ions. So that's going to be two hydrogen ions and two iodide ions. This is an ionic compound dissolved in water. We write it as ions. So barium, two plus. How many hydroxide ions? Two. This is OH2. So there's our reactants. And then in the products, this one's a liquid. Solid liquid gas, just leave it alone. 2H2O liquid soluble ionic compound split it into ions barium 2 plus nucleus plus 2 iodides aqueous I prefer to look at the original equation and just write down the number of ions that are there as I go along. But if you want to just write the ions without any coefficients and come back and balance it later, you could do that too. But this should be balanced. So that's the complete ionic equation. Any questions? The net ionic equation, we're going to cross off any of the spectators. Who's a spectator? Barium's a spectator. So 
the barium was not changed and iodide. So iodide didn't change. So then we're going to write down what's left. 2H plus aqueous plus two hydroxides aqueous. I'm going to make two water molecules. Now, what's weird about that balanced chemical equation? Does it need two in front of everything? No. When you get to your net ionic equation, if you can simplify, reduce the coefficients, you should. So this is best written as H plus plus OH minus, making it. Any question? The net ionic equation tells us who was changed by the reaction. The spectators, iodide and barium, they were mixing around, but they were not changed in the chemical reaction.